The Netherlands, a land of canals, windmills and tulips. But this picturesque landscape hides a secret. Much of this land was once underwater, claimed by the sea. The Dutch, known for their tenacity, refused to accept defeat. Using windmills and dikes, they pushed back the water, inch by inch, reclaiming what was lost. This is the story of the Beemster Polder, a shining example of this hard-won victory. Located north of Amsterdam, the Beemster is a testament to human ambition and innovation. Created in the early 17th century, the Beemster transformed a shallow lake into fertile farmland. The Beemster is not just a feat of engineering, it is a symbol of human resilience. The story of the Beemster is a story of visionaries, engineers and laborers who dared to dream big. They envisioned a future where the sea could be tamed, where land could be created. It was a risky endeavor, fraught with challenges, but the rewards were immense. More land meant more space for farming, for living, for thriving. The mastermind behind this ambitious project was Jan Adrian Soon Leaguewater, a renowned hydraulic engineer. Leaguewater devised a plan to drain the Beemster Lake using a ring dike and a network of canals and windmills. The work was arduous, requiring the collaboration of thousands over several years. And in 1612, after years of relentless effort, the Beemster Polder was born. To understand the Beemster, we need to go back in time, back to a time when the Netherlands was a very different place. Imagine a land constantly at war, not with other nations, but with the sea itself. The North Sea, a powerful force of nature, threatened to swallow the land whole. Storms raged, waves crashed, and the sea relentlessly gnawed at the coastline. For centuries, the Dutch lived with this constant threat. Their homes, their lives, always at the mercy of the sea. But they refused to be defeated. They adapted, innovated, and fought back reclaiming land from the clutches of the sea. This struggle for survival shaped their identity, their culture, their very existence. The North Sea was a formidable enemy. It was unpredictable, unforgiving, and relentless. Storms could strike suddenly, bringing with them devastating floods. These floods, known as storm surges, were a constant threat to the low-lying lands of the Netherlands. Entire villages could be wiped out in a single night. Lives lost, homes destroyed, crops ruined. The fight against the sea was a matter of survival. They developed new techniques for building dikes, stronger, more resilient, able to withstand the wrath of the sea. They became masters of water management, their skills passed down through generations. Section 3. The Rise of the Dykebowers Out of this constant struggle emerged a new breed of heroes, the dykebowers, the dyke builders. These were not soldiers or knights, but skilled craftsmen, engineers and laborers who dedicated their lives to protecting their land from the sea. They were the guardians of the coastline, the first line of defense against the relentless waves. The dykebowers were masters of their craft. They understood the properties of earth and water how to build structures that could withstand immense pressure. They worked tirelessly, often in harsh conditions, to build and maintain the dikes that protected their homeland. The dike bowers were symbols of Dutch resilience and ingenuity. Section 1. The Audacious Plan Imagine standing on the shores of the Beemster Lake in the late 16th century. The vastness of the water stretches before you, shimmering under the Dutch sky. The wind whips across the surface, creating ripples that dance towards the edges. It seems an impossible task, taming this wild expanse. Yet this is precisely what Jan Adrian Zoon Leaguewater set out to do. Leaguewater wasn't just an engineer, he was a visionary. He saw not an insurmountable body of water, but the fertile land it concealed. The Beemster Lake wasn't a small pond to be drained, it was a significant inland sea, covering over 7,000 hectares. League Water's plan hinged on a ring dike, a massive earthen embankment encircling the entire lake. This dike, over 40 kilometers long, would act as a barrier, 
holding back the water and protecting the future polder. But building a dike of this magnitude was only the first hurdle. Section 2. The Windmills, Engines of Change Windmills were already a familiar sight in the Dutch landscape, their sails turning lazily in the wind. But for the Beamster project, Leaguewater envisioned windmills of a different breed. These would be powerful behemoths, specifically designed for the arduous task of water removal. 43 windmills, strategically placed around the Ringdijk, would become the workhorses of the project. These weren't just structures, they were complex pieces of engineering, each one a testament to Dutch ingenuity. Their massive sails, some spanning over 20 meters, captured the wind's energy, driving a system of gears and Archimedes screws. These screws, rotating within tightly fitted cylinders, acted like giant water screws, lifting water from the lake and depositing it into a network of canals built outside the ring dike. Day and night, the windmills labored, their tireless efforts slowly but surely pushing back the water. Section 3. A Symphony of Labor The Beamster polder wasn't just a feat of engineering, it was a testament to human collaboration. Thousands of laborers, their backs bent against the wind, toiled tirelessly to make League Water's vision a reality. Men dug and hauled earth, forming the massive embankment of the ring dike. Carpenters and millwrights, with their adzes and saws, constructed the towering windmills, fitting together massive timbers with precision. Blacksmiths hammered out iron fittings, their forges glowing red against the twilight. Women and children carried supplies, prepared meals, and offered encouragement, their contributions as vital as the muscle and sweat of the men on the front lines. It was back-breaking work, dangerous and demanding. Yet they persevered, driven by the promise of new land and new opportunities. Section 4. Triumph over nature. Years turned into seasons, seasons into months, and finally, after four years of relentless labor, the day arrived. The last of the water was pumped out, the windmills fell silent, and a hush fell over the gathered crowd. The Beamster Lake, once a formidable body of water, was no more. In its place lay a vast expanse of flat, fertile land, stretching as far as the eye could see. A grid of drainage canals crisscrossed the polder, reflecting the sky like silver ribbons. The Beamster polder, a testament to human ingenuity, determination and sheer grit, was born. The impossible had been achieved. Section 1. A New Horizon – Life on Reclaimed Land The draining of the Beamster Lake wasn't just a feat of engineering, it was the dawn of a new era for the region, where once waves crashed and fish swam, now lay fertile ground ripe for the taking. The newly exposed seabed, rich in nutrients, promised agricultural abundance. People flocked to the Beamster, eager to claim their piece of this hard-won paradise. Farmers, their faces weathered by the sun and the sea, arrived with their families and their dreams. The polder, once a watery void, was now a blank canvas ready to be molded by the hands of these pioneers. The Beamster was no longer a desolate expanse, it was becoming a thriving community. Section 2. The Polder's Bounty, Agriculture and Prosperity The rich soil of the Beamster, nourished by centuries of accumulated sediment, proved to be exceptionally fertile. Crops flourished in the polder's favorable conditions, a flat landscape maximizing sunlight exposure, fertile soil, and a sophisticated system of canals ensuring efficient drainage and irrigation. The Beamster, once a symbol of the sea's dominion, was now a breadbasket, its bounty feeding the nation. Fields of wheat and barley, their golden heads swaying in the breeze, stretched as far as the eye could see. Dairy farms, with their distinctive black and white cows, became a common sight. The Beamster cheese, renowned for its rich flavor and creamy texture, soon gained a reputation that extended far beyond the polder's borders. The polder's agricultural success brought with it economic prosperity. Section 3. 
Order in the landscape. The geometry of success. Unlike the often chaotic layout of older Dutch towns, the Beemsterpolder stands out for its striking geometric design. Reclaimed in a single, massive undertaking, it provided a unique opportunity for planned development. The result is a landscape of remarkable order and efficiency, a testament to the Dutch love of precision and practicality. Straight roads, running perpendicular to each other, divide the polder into a grid pattern. Canals, mirroring the roads, provide drainage, irrigation and transportation routes. Farmhouses, spaced at regular intervals, dot the landscape, their red-tiled roofs adding splashes of color to the verdant expanse. This geometric layout wasn't just about aesthetics, it was a reflection of the polder's function. Section 4. A Lasting Legacy – The Beamster's Enduring Impact The Beamster polder stands today as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Dutch people. It is a symbol of their ingenuity, their resilience, and their ability to not just survive but thrive in the face of adversity. But the Beamster's legacy extends far beyond its borders. It serves as a model for sustainable land reclamation projects worldwide its success inspiring engineers and planners for centuries. The Beamster Polder is a living, breathing testament to the enduring power of human endeavor. A world of Polder's Beamster in context. The Dutch didn't invent reclaiming land from the sea. Across the globe, from ancient times, humans have sought to push back the water's edge. Think of the rice paddies of Southeast Asia, carved from marshland or the fens of eastern England, transformed from soggy marsh to fertile farmland. These feats of engineering, driven by the need for more space, more resources, echo the spirit of the Beamster. But the Beamster, while part of this global story of human resilience, stands apart. Its scale, the innovative use of wind power for drainage, and its remarkably well-preserved state make it truly unique. It's a living, breathing testament to the enduring legacy of Dutch water management. The Dutch didn't just reclaim land, they exported their expertise. Their knowledge became highly sought after worldwide. From England to the Mississippi Delta, Dutch engineers tamed waters and created land. New Orleans, built below sea level, echoes the Dutch battle with the sea. Dutch engineers designed its early flood control systems. Today, New Orleans levees and pumps show Dutch expertise. In Japan, polders, known as umezu, have been used for centuries. These reclaimed lands, often for rice, show the universal appeal of land reclamation. What sets the Beamster apart, however, is not just its engineering, but its aesthetic appeal. It transcends its purely functional purpose as reclaimed land. The geometric layout, the network of canals reflecting the sky, the picturesque farmhouses dotting the landscape, all combine to create a sense of harmony and beauty. The Beamster isn't just farmland, it's a cultural landscape, shaped by human hands and imbued with human history. It's a place where the lines between nature and engineering blur where functionality and beauty coexist in perfect equilibrium. This fusion is what earned the Beamster its designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. This recognition highlights the Beamster's global significance, not just as an engineering marvel, but as a testament to human creativity and our ability to shape the environment while respecting its delicate balance. It's a place where visitors can walk through history, marvel at human ingenuity, and experience the unique beauty of a landscape born from the sea. Standing on the edge of the Beamster polder today, it's hard to imagine it any other way. The flat, fertile land stretches out before you, a testament to the vision and determination of those who dared to challenge the sea. The wind whispers through the leaves of trees lining the canals, a gentle reminder of the forces that shaped this unique landscape. The Beamster is a story that resonates across generations. It teaches us that even the most daunting challenges can be overcome with ingenuity and perseverance.
It's a story that reminds us of the power of human collaboration. The Beamster is more than just a historical curiosity. It's a living testament to the enduring power of human endeavor. It's a place where the past and present intertwine, where the echoes of windmills mingle with the hum of modern life. The Beamster Polder stands as a beacon of hope. It reminds us that we can shape our world and create a better future. The spirit of innovation and collaboration is more relevant than ever. From rising sea levels to sustainable agriculture, the challenges we face are global. Like the Dutch engineers who drained the Beamster Lake, we can find solutions and innovate. The Beamster is a reminder of the power of human ingenuity. It's a story of resilience and innovation, a deep connection to the land, a story that continues to inspire, reminding us that we can create a better future.